When did life begin? When that which is living realized it. Now they know there is life on Mars. The Holy Tablets, Chapter 3 told them that years ago. What happens when you move the concept of time? If time doesn't actually go forward or backward, there is no beginning that way or this way. If you remove the concept of time, then you take away heaven and hell. And again, time doesn't go backward and forward. It is the misconception of time that gives God the power, if there is no beginning and no ending, then why does the physical body die and then become reborn? Your question is in actuality the answer. The physical body is composed of elements formed and shaped in the womb from other elements, ovum and semen, that is formed and shaped in the male and female, who are also in turn composed of elements. So, we are speaking about bulk matter, mass the human body. Once one appears to be in a state of what people are calling dead or death, dehydration into rigor mortis, into a breakdown, they return to dust or dirt to become a part of the substance needed to grow life. So, in fact, the process of life is better said as living. And living is determined over a period of time from what is called birth to death but, the being did not begin at birth, and does not really end at death. But, is merely a part of an ongoing metamorphosis into becoming. If there is no beginning and no ending, how do we know when our existence has ended? Existence in itself confirms no ending. In order to have an ending or an end of days on the world, a final day, a last day, you must have a beginning. And whoever is responsible or whatever is responsible for that point of origin, must have been there, thus predating the beginning. Exactly what is the beginning? Beginning is a declaration of a point of origin of something or action. What is prefixed to it can change the whole concept. For instance, in the beginning, or at the beginning, or the beginning of, and I can continue on and on what I put before you is that the translators were quite selective of the words they used to leave one unable to grasp just what they were trying to say. Now, looking at Genesis. And I chose Genesis of the Judaic doctrine because it fathered both Christianity and Islam. Look at Genesis, chapter 1 verse 1 where it states, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. As stated earlier, this quote leaves doubt to just what is meant by beginning and exactly when, where and how a beginning began. How many beginnings are there? You are the beginning of everything, and with you everything begun. And when you die that is the end of you. You are worshipping for what is promised to you and it's not guaranteed. For example, you were promised your whole life that if you worship and obey this God, and turn the other cheek, then you go to heaven. This is something that is not guaranteed or confirmed to be true. You can get everything that is promised to you in the scriptures right here on earth. No one has returned from the dead and publicly confirmed your hopes of a heaven or paradise. All you do is wish and hope for what you have been promised. Or is everyone who died somewhere, just waiting to get into heaven? Now imagine how chaotic that would be. What is the purpose of the beginning? Religious teaching will give you one purpose and scientific facts will give another. While religion is based on faith, belief and finally hope, scientific data is based on research, confirmation and results. Scientists discuss the beginning of this and the beginning of that to determine where we are in time, space and matter. Whereas religious theologians put theories forth that a male god decided to create beings to serve him and his purpose. And if they obey his commands and wishes, he will grant them luxuries, thus making God's purpose from the beginning, service to him. Is promise the source of faith? Yes. In the monotheistic religions, the tactic used is a promise of all the things that one couldn't obtain while living on earth. Some call it heaven, others paradise and even others the garden of paradise, it's what's promised to those who blindly follow the dictations of mortals, who claim to speak with, have spoken to, or are inspired by God, thus having faith, beliefs, and hopes for what is promised. This is an abode where responsibilities, obligations, accomplishments, allures, challenges, and fears don't exist. What governs this abode? Cause and effect. What is wrong with believing in the heaven concept? Nothing is wrong with a belief in anything, as long as you realize it is just that, a belief and not a fact. Just look at it this way, if you were to die and go to this place called heaven. You would want to see all of your past relatives, who would also all be looking for their past relatives. You would want to see Muhammad, Moses, Jesus, maybe your favorite hero Caesar or Genghis Khan. But, imagine the confusion of everybody all running around looking for someone else. Is there a difference between heaven and paradise? Yes, the word heaven has its root in the Middle English word heaven, from Old English heophon. You will find as the languages shift from Latin to the more recent English, heaven came from hefen, meaning a harbor anchorage or a port. In fact, the original meaning of heaven was not the abode where God dwells, but, the port to which you dock and meet God. A place you would arrive at. Now the word paradise is generally thought of as being from the Greek word paradisos, meaning garden, enclosed park or area, it has its root in pain, which means around, and dezo, meaning wall around the wall or the enclosure. 
The Bible uses Gone Eden in Genesis 2:8, where I states, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. The Hebrew is Gone Garden in Eden for delight, so you get simply the enclosed garden of delight, where one receives great pleasure and joy. The word delight is from the Latin word delicier meaning to allure, and the word lassery meaning to entice. Again, we are back to promises of pleasure and luxury to lure people to a specific place. Why would a God that knows your every thought, feelings, plan, and wishes, Psalms 44:21, need to lure you? So, when was the beginning of the creation of earth? The word earth in the Bible is, Eretz, and in the Quran 2:11 it is art, which just means ground and can actually apply to any planet in any solar system in any universe in any galaxy. It is that possessive part of man's nature that makes him think that the word earth, is his and is alone. Just as mortals on this planet, called Earth, take it upon themselves to name other planets, Mercury, Venus, and star constellation galaxies and systems. So, you seek an answer to the beginning of Earth, when in fact what you want to know is the beginning of this very planet on which you stand. So, neither the Bible nor the Quran can give you a scientific answer to that question. But, mineralogists who study decayed and aging soil sample, have the answer. Funny as it may sound, Genesis of the Bible chapter 2, verse 11 to 12 states, The name of the first is Pisan, that is it which encompasseth the whole land Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, there is delium and onyx stone. King James Version. So, the Bible is identifying with an element of the atomic chart gold. The 79th atomic number and weight 196.967, and a melting point of L, 063. 0 degrees Celsius. It takes the element gold further than the calculation of creation in the Bible and Quran, which is dated only as far back as 4004 to 6000 years according to the best of Judaic, Christian and Islamic scholars. So, the very mention of gold, arid good gold, implying that there was other than good gold, changes the whole concept of the age of the planet you stand on and call Earth. Does each planet have its own time zone? Yes. If you can call it a time, based on the rotating of a mass around a sun, which is going nowhere, how long it takes for it to complete that cycle would be based on how far away it is from the central mass, designating a period from start to finish in a circular motion in this solar system. Mercury to date is the closest planet to your sun. So, it has a shorter period of rotating than does Earth, which is the third in distance from the sun. Were all planets created at one time or at a gradual process? Note how time is being used now. At one time with a single moment not moving forward. Planets were not created. They grew through time. To say that planets were created is to say that some god being went poof the magic dragon. And things just started. And that's just not the way science works. There are people who can live under the sun called people of the sun. 9 to the 9th power of 9 ether. Woolly haired beings. And then there are people who can't. And those people are the melanin recessive beings. The kakasu. If the Kakasu race, like every other race of people and like the animals, were created on this planet and are supposed to live under the sun, then why does it kill them? By that I mean, if the most high plan for Kakasu to dwell under the sun, shouldn't they be able to lay on the beaches like every other race of people without worrying about damaging their DNA repair process and the immune system, getting cataracts, premature aging of the skin known as sunburn or skin cancer? They obviously must have not been a part of the original procreation of man, but a mutation or a secondary race, refer to the Paleman scroll number 20. What is the sun? The sun is a star, a huge glowing ball of gases that was created 93 billion years ago at the center of your solar system. It is one of billions of stars in the universe, but it is the closest to the Earth at the average distance of 93 million miles away. Due to the Earth's elliptical orbit, during the solstices, which is the summer and the winter, the Earth is farthest away from the Sun and during the equinoxes, which is autumn and spring, the Earth is closest to the Sun. The Sun's supposed diameter is 865,000 miles which is about 109 times greater than the diameter of Gaia, which is the Greek word used for the planet Earth and about 400 times greater than the diameter of the Moon. The Sun which is also called Yellow Dwarf by astronomers, for its small size in comparison to the other stars is made up of 71% hydrogen, H1, 27% helium, H2, and 70 other elements that make up the remaining 1 to 2%. The Sun generates energy by turning hydrogen into helium, through nuclear fusion reactions in its interior. This energy is then radiated into space by mostly invisible, ultraviolet, and infrared light. Only about one billionth of the Sun's light reaches the Earth. The short wavelength ultraviolet rays of the Sun are most intolerable by the caveman for fear of death. Read Sons of Canaan scroll number 145 and the dog scroll number 143, is acknowledging the sun beneficial? 
Yes, it's the source of all sustenance of all life on the planet Earth, but you don't have to worship it. No more than you would worship a potato for its nutrients or any other vegetable or means of sustenance to the body. You simply respect it or them. However, in ancient times, when people depended on the weather, they set up what's called the seasons, from the sons of the sea, meaning reptilians, and is breaking the weather up into four parts of the year, winter, spring, summer, and fall to represent the four cycles, which will be explained further on in this scroll. Anybody who was a farmer depended on the rain, which is water, and to follow after the rain would be the sun that would help their crops grow. So, in ancient times the people of the different tribes would appoint a person who would bring in the weather by reminding everyone with ceremonial dances such as, the snake dance in plea for rain that is done by the Native American Hopi tribe, the sun dance, which was led by the eldest, medicine woman of the Native American Blackfoot tribe, the Okipa celebrated for the Lord of Life, who lived in the sun performed by the African tribe of Mondan, etc. These ceremonies and dances were led by the tribal medicine man slash woman, the witch doctor, the shaman by the Native Americans, the Obia in the Caribbeans, the Hogan by the Dogans of Africa, or Karaama in the Islamic world, as called in many tribes. In some places like Salisbury, England, monuments such as the Stonehenge were built for the use of ceremonies and religious events. Obelisks were another type of monument built in significance of the sun, originally called Ben Ben from where the word Ben meaning sun in the Aramaic, Hebrew, and Ben meaning sun in the Ashuric slash Syriac, Arabic, language comes from. Obelisks are monolithic, large blocks of stone used in architecture, stone monuments that have inscriptions written on the sides and a pyramid at the top. The ancient Egyptians, Kemetites, usually built them in pairs and associated them with the rays of the sun, which increase in width as they reach the Earth's surface. These resulted in individuals being called sun gods, or rain deities. Obelisks are also a sign of Christianity influencing politics worldwide. So, where did people who can't live under the sun come from? From beneath the earth in caverns and caves or from beyond the realm of your atmosphere. That is, outside of the earth's atmosphere. Several names were given in the Bible for them in the book of Genesis. One is Amorite which is a compound of a meaning nation and Harite meaning cave dweller. Thus Amorite means nations of cave dwellers, refer to the sons of Canaan scroll number 145. The Quran of the Muhammadans dedicate the whole chapter 18 to their dwelling in caves and their mating with beasts. The chapter is called Surat Akaf. The Canaanites, who are descendants of Canaan, the son of Ham and Halima, daughter of Unis and Shakar, Yubin, of 6,000 years ago are not to be confused with the Halah beans, who are also known as the Huluwab, or Flugelrods of 8,400 years ago. The Flugelrods, were the product of a graftation by mixing the Pleiadians, who are the blonde-haired, blue-eyed beings with the genes of the Asiatic, black, straight-haired, black-skinned, and black-eyed Hindus. The graftation of the brown germ to the red germ to the yellow germ on into the new earth bred Flugelrods, refer to the sons of Canaan scroll number 145. The Flugelrods, who are the original Aryan race, were split into two groups. One group of Flugelrods became what is known as Neanderthals or cavemen. They were shameless, moralis, hairy beings that walked on all fours and ate raw flesh, living in a state of bestiality. They are the fathers of the Nordics race and live in the inner caverns of the earth under Antarctica, in their home called Palakwapi. Read Mission Earth and the Extraterrestrial Involvement Scroll Number 82, and Man from Planet Risk Scroll Number 80. The second group of Flugelrods moved to a part of Russia called Caucasia or the Caucasus Mountains, and became known as the Khazars or Ashkenazims and the Seven Ether, haired Orientals of this seed called Asiatics became known as the Sepharad or Sephardim Jew. What is bestiality and where did it come from? Bestiality is the sexual seduction of any beast, be it a dog, an alligator, or a pig. The original act of bestiality was humans having sex with what the Bible calls behemoth which are human beast, beast of the fields, Leviticus 2015, not dogs. Bestiality came about during a period of time when the lepers, who had the curse of leprosy, lived in the Caucasus Mountains between the Caspian Sea and the Black Sea, which is where the name Caucasus comes from, Caucasus meaning dead, deterioration in Asian which was originally denoted as the region of the rising sun and later changed to region of the setting sun by Europeans. The Kakasu began to lose the power to reproduce because the mountains in which they lived were bare, Quran 18-8, El's Holy Quran 69-18. So, the salt in their body had reached a dangerous minimum. They're lacking in the full amount of internal melanin which activates the iodine which can interfere with their reproductivity and the mental stability of their offspring, read Melaninite Children Scroll number 133. Also, a hormone called adrenocorticotropic hormone or ACT which regulates all of the bodily functions by which these hormones are indirectly controlled by the pituitary gland. 
These functions include the metabolism of salt, sodium, iodine, water, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, neuromuscular functions and the sexual function. The loss of ACT leads to symptoms such as, weakness, low blood pressure, diminished blood sugar, which in this state you cannot reproduce a full term, healthy child. Leviticus 2015. And if a male living being lies, gives in copulation, lies, with a beast, he will be put to death, and you will kill the behemoth, beast. Right translation in Aramaic, Hebrew, by, Dr. Malachi Z. York. L's Holy Quran 69-8, Original Order, and surely we, Elohim, Anunnaki will make everything on Chi the planet Earth barren as dry ground, without herbage. Right translation in Ashuric slash Syriac, Arabic, by, Dr. Malachi Z. York. Internal melanin plays an important part in the early stages of human development, embryology. Melanin is found in several critical sites in an embryo. The outer layer of an embryo called the ectoderm is composed of three regions, the prospective neural tube, the prospective neural crest, and the prospective epidermis. It is within these three regions that melanin plays its first key role in maintaining life. The neural tube is separated into, the brain, the posterior pituitary gland, the optic vesicles membranes wrapped in bubbles, the spinal cord, the motor nerves nerves that cause motion that originate in the ventral portion of the neural tube and innervate muscles. The neural crest derivatives consist of cells that migrate to distant parts of the body. These migrating cells form sensory nerves and ganglia a mass of nervous tissues composed of nerve cell bodies, which receive impulses from the following sites, sense organs, autonomic ganglia, the adrenal medulla, all of the pigmented retina part of the eye that receives images cells, which are derived from the neural tube. The cartilages in the voice box and head, some of the ectodermal muscles. The epidermal layer can be divided into cells derived from epidermal thickenings and those derived from the rest of the epidermis. They include, some of the cranial part of the skull that encloses the brain nerves, the lens of the eye, the olfactory sense of smell structures, the inner ear, the taste buds. Melanin is an organizing molecule present in the early stages of growth ensuring that these systems are properly formed and maintained. Melanin also provides many functions such as facilitating the conversion of energy and protecting cells from toxic substances. Without melanin the development of a human being wouldn't be on its natural course. Today Nubians are being born with lesser amounts of melanin. That is why you are getting sicker with more diseases than years ago. Melanin helps to control and protect cells. Without melanin your cells are more susceptible to virus infections. This is a result of the removal of a pea-sized gland called the baratari gland. The word baratari stems from the Aramaic, Hebrew, word bara meaning beginning of a thing or to bring about, to a new and was originally placed in the hippocampus area located in the cerebellum region of your brain. Since the removal of the baratari gland four other higher senses that enabled you to communicate with various Anunnaki have been cut off, telepathy, clairvoyance, intuition, and psychometry, read man from planet risk scroll number 80. Therefore, the Canaanite males came down from the mountains to kidnap melaninite women of the Nubian villages in order to have sexual relations and reproduce an offspring that would not bear the full curse of leprosy. The lepers that did not mix in with the Nubian women, were pushed further back up into the mountains. They had fallen so low with the shortage of males that this resulted in the women of these lepers laying with and having sexual intercourse with beasts, such as the jackal, which is an ancestor of today's dog called man's best friend, who used to lick the sores of the lepers clean. Refer to the dog scroll number 143. The Kakasu seed was kept alive because the Canaanite women and the jackal made it. This is also how and where the following diseases came about, such as gonorrhea, which is a disease that attacks the reproductive system as well as the urinary system caused by bacterium that is almost exclusively transmitted through sexual contact. Syphilis is a very serious disease that can affect any organ of the body caused by a spiral-shaped bacteria called spirochete. Canine transmissible venereal tumor which cause tumors to grow on or near the genitals and occasionally on the face, shoulders and other regions. Trichomoniasis which is an infection of a parasitic protozoan Trichomonas vaginalis, one species of zooflagellate protozoa that are common parasites in the digestive system of animals which can be sexually transmitted. The word hirsutism or what is known as hypertrichosis comes from the word hirsutes meaning excessive growth of hair which is from the Latin root word hirsutus meaning shaggy, bristly. Hirsutism originated from the jackal people, who were descendants of Hindu avatars incarnated on Terra, an earlier name for Earth from the planet Nirvana of the six-star constellation of Orion, red are their UFOs extraterrestrials in our midst. Scroll number 84, they mix their seed with the shaggy, thus reproducing a hairy, shaggy offspring, refer to the Holy Tablets Chapter 3, Tablet 3. There are people being born whose coccyx bone is extended beyond the lower back forming tail-like appendages. 
When a child is in the womb of its mother as an embryo at around the fourth week old, he has a tail which later grows to be the coccyx of the spine. The coccyx is from the Greek word coccyx and is the small triangular bone at the lower end of the vertebral column, the rudiment of a tail which is sometimes called the vestigial tail. A vestige is a body part which represents a primitive structure that may not be fully developed or functional as it once was during the embryonic stages. There have been many cases of babies being born with tails where the coccyx is covered with skin on both the interior and posterior surfaces. These tails can be straight, segmented, or curled and some can be wagged from side to side. Some tails are short and stubby and others range to be as long as 3 feet and are removed with proper surgery. These types of people are referred to as simply primates. Primates means pre-meaning before in mates. Oftentimes they call them ape man, or pithecanthropus, or the java man, which is the son of and short for Javan, the fourth son of Japheth, son of Utnafishtim, Noah, and Nama, daughter of Anam and Sakina.